Moving right along, I'm flying V. I've got the parts for the uh, like control cavity, the knobs, or not the knobs, I'm sorry, the pots, the wires, the caps, the switches. It all came from a place called, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Holland Customs. They sent me everything I needed. I wanted to do it myself, but I wasn't sure what I needed. So I found a place that supplied all the parts and very layman style instructions, not schematics, like very, very visual, like here's how you do it. Put the green wire here into there. I don't want to do this on the actual, I have the pick guard for the V, but I don't want to do it on the pick guard just because of the heat from the soldering gun. So I just made a, a dumb little template where the uh, pots are just gonna stick through their respective hole and I will wire it up back here. And then when it's done, I will just move it over to the pit guard. So obviously I can only do um, the pots. I'll have to do the output jack separately because it will have to go through, the jack will obviously have to go through here before I can solder it to the rest. And the same with the humbuckers. They should be coming in tomorrow. So I can really only do the pick guard for now until I get everything else in place and I can kind of do the final soldering. I don't think I'm gonna film this because it's probably gonna take me a while. That would that would probably be a pretty big clip. So I'm just gonna explain what I'm doing. And that really is just following the instructions and soldering it exactly how it says. And I really just wanna take my time and not have to worry about messing it up like for the camera. I'm going to just enjoy this with the camera off and then I will check back in before I move it over to the actual pick guard. I'll just check back in when I'm kind of done with. It'd be this part right here. So anyway, that's our next step. And this chair is really loud. I've got it completed on my template and I'll show you things that I think I did wrong. There was two cloth wires and I didn't, there wasn't like instructions on what wires went where, it's just like a visual thing on like, put this wire here and put that wire over there. I used the cloth wire for up here and I think that was probably supposed to be a lead to the output jack. I use this one instead. I hope that's not a problem. I think it's slightly smaller. If it is, I guess I'll just redo it, but we'll try it like this. These are not cut. Uh, I'll cut them once I know how long I need them after I get stuff installed on the guitar. And then this is the ground for to go under the bridge. So again, same thing. I'm not going to cut it until, until I'm closer to actually install there. But yeah, it went pretty good. I just threw Spotify up and took my time and had fun with it. I have to obviously wire in the humbuckers when they come, hopefully tomorrow. That should be it. I'm gonna transfer this over to the actual pick guard now. So hopefully that'll look cool. Pretty easy transition. A little dirty, but I don't have the knobs yet. Fits nice. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I left this part on just to help protect it while I do the uh, the install of the pick guard. I'm not sure, I don't know if I should have transferred it yet because I still have to mark these holes on the body. But I don't think it should be an issue. Yeah, pretty happy with how that turned out. Cool. to make a slight adjustment the pots didn't quite fit in the original route that I had made so I had to make a slightly bigger hump up here slightly bigger hump down here just to be able to it fit but I wasn't able to rotate it into the correct orientation whereas now you can drop it in and get that nice and square where I want it. And then the pickups will fit nicely there. We're going to mark these locations and drill them out for mounting screws. 
And then I think we'll probably mark the humbucker mounting locations and drill those out and get that stuff mounted up. Well, here she is. Got everything in place and soldered up. I got some, I ran out of screws, so I'm gonna need some more screws for the pick guard, but also I don't like zebras, so we're gonna get gold covers so it matches the, uh, the 5859. But yeah, let's throw some strings on it. I'm getting down there on the V. There's only a few things that are left to do. Uh, I started putting the knobs on and I realized like, oh, I want to shoot this. So I've got one knob on and I did the, uh, I've always called them witch hats, bell tops, whatever you want to call them, kind of the concave style. I'll put the uh, two volume ones on. And then I've got the strap buttons to put on. And I've got my picture up. I don't know if it's in, yep, I've got my reference picture up to find uh, a similar location for the strap buttons and I want to I'll obviously have to do something for a truss rod cover and I might do a logo then the only thing left to do is gold pickup covers which I'm not sure if I want to do pickup covers yet a because I've heard Seymour Duncan's need Seymour Duncan pickup covers I don't know why that would be they measured like they're both 50 millimeters but I guess if you know something that I don't, feel free to leave a comment because I'm not sure why I can't just buy any brand pickup cover as long as it fits the 50 millimeter pole spacing. But I've read that Duncans need Duncan covers. So I guess if that's the case, I really like covers, but I don't know if that I want to spend, you know, $60 just to get brand covers. Let's get those strap buttons on and the volume knobs. So I like to put them all the way on 10 and then line my knob up this way. These are the 24 spline pots. So I had to get 24 spline knobs and I got them. There we go. From, where's my package? The same place that I got those ferrules from. Vintage Ford. Oh, I think they're down here. Um, yeah. Vintage Forge, and I really like them. I really like the quality of the ferrules that I got from them. So if you're looking for parts, that Vintage Forge seems like a pretty decent place. There, that one's on. And we'll do the same with the second volume, the bridge volume. That's one thing that's been throwing me off as I test this out is, from what I gathered, the neck pickup volume is here and the bridge pickup volume is here as it correlates you know neck bridge neck bridge but when you're playing the bridge for whatever reason it's more in instinctual to grab this one here so it's going to take some time to get used to having to come down to this one also this pickup selector switch I'm used to having it up here, like on the Les Paul. So when I'm switching back and forth, it's been kind of, it's just a learning curve, new position and throwing it in a new way. But other than that, I've been pretty happy with it. All right, knobs are on. Flying V. Oh, I just hit my other guitars, God damn it. These are the strap buttons I'll be using. And from what I can tell, on the 58, there's one on the shoulder here and then there is one this seems really goofy to me but on the inside of the V here so that's where I'm gonna go Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna set that here for a second. Oh, 
we're gonna set it here. And I'm gonna grab the strap that I bought for it from, I can't pronounce it, but I've gotten some other straps from them before and really liked it. Come on. Nephil Labada. Nephil Labada. You don't have to pronounce it. Just have to show a picture of the logo. Cut that off. Yeah, I'm digging that. That's pretty cool. Make it a little longer. <laughs> All right, first look. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do that. So first impressions, this is the first time I'm playing this. Um, obviously with a strap on, you guys just watched me install the buttons. It's much more like forward. I mean, obviously it's not that. I expected, you know, I'm just used to kind of playing back here a little bit. And it's it's almost like you have to be cognizant that you, if you norm, you're used to playing here, to maybe just slide up a little bit. But I like the way it feels. It's not as heavy as I thought it would be. I haven't weighed it yet. Sweet! So yeah, I think I'm gonna get my fiance to print me. She's got a Cricut. I wanna put like my YouTube logo up here. And then I'll find a truss rod cover. I've got an old Les Paul truss rod cover that I think I'm gonna make work here. All right, the pickups came in. Pretty basic gold. No, uh, earlier I said I've heard that to get a Seymour Duncan to fit a cover, you have to buy Seymour Duncan covers. I took a chance with some cheaper covers, and the outside poles just barely missed the outside holes. So I just took a small. I think it's like three thirty seconds or five thirty seconds, a five thirty seconds file, and just ever so lightly rounded. I don't even know if you can tell. Rounded out the outside holes. It's probably too reflective. Either way, and now it fits fine. So again, I'm probably gonna test fit these first, make sure that there's not any issues with tone or something goofy that I don't like. If I like it, then I'll go back and add uh, something solder or whatever to keep them secure. Gold cover. Zebra. Let me know, what do you think? I personally think I'm gonna like the gold covers. Only time will tell. Let's do that rear one and then I will come back. I'm gonna do the rear one off camera. It's the exact same as the front one. Um, we'll do the rear one and then I'll come back. There it is. I also added logo to kind of finish off the project. A little bit of tweaking and some fine tuning, but this guitar, I think I can say is done. Um, like I said, I'll have to make some adjustments here and there, but as far as parts and installs go, she's done. So recap, we've got a red oak body stained. We've got the witch hat or top hat style. It's 
speed knobs. Seymour Duncan 59s. I think it's SH59. And then we've got a perloid block inlay because I couldn't find the dots. And then my custom logo. Stay tuned to see how it sounds.